Right then, lads, welcome back to F1 2021. My team, Career Mode Episode 2 for the Spanish Grand Prix today. Of course, we have a pretty big gap between um, Race 1 and Race 2 because Portsmouth and Imola aren't in the game yet. And the first thing I'm doing here, actually, is I'm going to increase the resource rates for Team McLean, um, the resource points and the cash for the AI here. I'm going to increase it for the AI and keep it default for myself. Make it a bit more challenging. Um, to make it a bit more interesting, uh, but just said, uh, you know, filling up the timeline with a lot of time. As I said, we have uh, actually enough time between race one and two for a season break. Because in real life, the Bra Bahrain Grand Prix was at the end of March, and then the Spanish Grand Prix was, well, it was uh, mid September, mid well, beginning of May. And of course, there was Imola and Portimao in between, but we don't have them on the cal in the game yet. They'll be coming later on, I hope soon. Um, but, well, and we do have. Uh, about six, about sixteen hundred R and D points. Um, looking into the the aerodynamic package, see what we can uh, develop here because we are pretty bad. We need to try and reduce the drag, get more downforce on the car, which will make it a lot better. And we have one of the worst aero packages on the field. Uh, so we'll develop the rear rear wing main plate thing, and hopefully that should come in fine before before Spain. And we have. Our first um, department event that happens. Um, these things can happen. And so our teammate Isla has been really, really hitting their stride in the simulator. Really, recently. Well, they're in the zone. Where should we get them to focus their development? And we can choose between pace and awareness. Pace will increase their overall pace in a race, and then awareness will mainly make he'll make less mistakes. Although he didn't really make any mistakes in barring. He did fall back a bit. Um, in the race, which probably means that we should increase his pace, and that's what I'm going to go for, increase his pace, which to be fair, his pace is actually not that bad, anyway, he made Q2 in, in Bahrain, and I couldn't even make Q2, uh, because I wasn't used to the car, but excuses, excuses, but we're going to go for the pace, increase his pace by 7 overall, the overall, rather than his awareness, that can come later. And I, I still love that. I still love that livery. And unfortunately, we've had a development failure. Um, another one that we had on the way. So we have to redevelop that. And it's the classic thing with this game. In the beginning, a lot of things develop and fail. We have another. We have another event. Famous action movie star and the clo and, clo and closet F1 fan Clay Donovan is going to be here for a look. Gonna be here, gonna be local for the next few weeks. Shouldn't pick up for an upcoming project. His agent's been touching, been been in touch, asking quite politely for a Hollywood type, might I add, whether we'd be whether we'd permit him to take a tour of the factory. This could be quite a coup for us in terms of publicity. What do you reckon? Well, if we decline it, then we get absolutely nothing. But if we accept it, then we get two thousand acclaim, but we lose one hundred thousand dollars. So I'm gonna accept it because if we get more acclaim, that will really boost our acclaim all the way up to acclaim level four now. Which is a lot since we're on like level two before. Now we're all the way up to four. Um, we have some equipment upgrades coming in and another event, well, a, a department we'll thing again, once again with Callum Ilot. Multiple media outlets are state are starting to report on Ilot being disconnected and distracted during recent press events. This will inevitably affect our team image and we want to ensure Ilot doesn't have any issues. How do we want to approach this? Well, if we talk to the driver, he increases his focus, but we lose 750 resource points. Uh, but if we do nothing, it just decreases his focus, um, which is focus, that'll just mean be, well, less focused. Um, you know, he won't be as there. Uh, but we are going to take the hit, lose the resource points, but that'll increase his focus, which will make him a better overall driver. Um, which, again, I think it is right goal. We did take a massive hit in terms of R&D points, um, but we do have that season break. And straight away, at the development we started, the rear wing main end plate failed. Rear wing main plate, rather. I got there in the end. So we, we have to redevelop that. It will still come in before the Grand Prix, thankfully. Um, but it's just so annoying. We do have a bit of money here that we can spend on the facilities and upgrading facilities. And I'm going to upgrade the fitness center to improve um, Callum's racecraft awareness and um, focus stats slightly, which will really help, you know, make him a better driver. And again, a fourth one. 
a development event. I need to speak with you about a recent message from IT and security. It appears we're under threat from hackers and malicious software whilst our systems are all up to date. They suggest that we put some time into additional training to ensure all our teams know how to reduce the risk of unauthorized access to our data. It's your call. And we actually cannot decline this one. We have to accept it. Um, we cannot decline it. So we take, we take the mandatory training. So I think it's probably because we didn't have enough resource points to be able to decline it. Um, but we move on, our upgrade's coming, and this is where we are on the res on the R&D chart. Um, Alpha Tari have re-overtaken us there, you can see. Um, and that is, all the AI teams have made improvements. You can see that's the effect of having them with increased rates and yourself normal or decreased. They'll get more and be able to upgrade a lot more. And it'll make it a bit more challenging for us, so, you know, but we're still in a good place. We're going through quick practice now um, to try and get as much as we can, as much resource points from this as we can. But also as much, um, as much, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the word I'm looking for is um, discounts on parts in the, in the chart. Um, and it's actually going really well because we have all three full practice sessions, unlike Bahrain, where we did not have practice one because I actually had to do practice one. I really just drove around, really. Um, just a few more left to go, and unfortunately having a few failures there, unfortunately, having a few failures at the end, it's, it's completely random. Um, although I have noticed that wear is a little high with this free practice, unfortunately. It is quite high with the free practice, which is kind of annoying, and it, Cody's might need to look at that. Um, and you'll see later on in the race what I mean by that. Uh, but we do get quite a lot. We get 600 R&D points from it ourselves from that. Um, unfortunately, Callum didn't get any, which is a little unfortunate, but we do get a lot of development boosts, a lot of um, d decreased rates on R&D parts, which will be very, very handy for later on in the future. Um, well, when we come to upgrade them, a lot it will be a lot cheaper to get them, so, which is basically it, especially that major one, the monocop structure and the chassis kind of... Reduce the weight, I think, it may be a little bit on that one. I don't know. But discounts on the R&D stuff is always very, very handy. And it does, this will boost us now actually up to a claim level 5 here, I believe. You can see there, we are now up to a claim level 5, which means we get a new sponsor. And of course, there is rain actually scheduled for the race. We move into qualifying. There is rain scheduled for this weekend later on in the race, unfortunately. Possibly. It is very cloudy and overcast at the moment, but there's no rain at the moment. It's dry, you know, there's no rain for qualifying. And here we go then in Q1. Spain has usually been a bit of a disaster for me. I did Spain twice in the four seasons of F1 2020, my team career mode. Uh, the first one I finished a lap down, second one, um, well, I crashed out. If you remember spectacularly, Spain has always been Spain without the S for me, so I'm not confident getting a world of understeer going a little wide there through turn three. Even though I lifted off ever so slightly on the entry into that corner. Um, good through turn four here though. Um, a little wide, we get a wheel on the grass and the gravel. We spew across the track and into the barrier. And that's our qualifying session coming to a very abrupt end right there. Um, as we just got a tire on the grass and the gravel. We just went a bit wide, we got on the throttle a bit too early, and we just got on the grass and gravel, and that is, a, that is one hell of an impact. That is one hell of an impact um, on the offboard. There wasn't really much we could do to correct that. I just kind of went on the grass, you kind of just lost it. And um, I do want to point out though there, though we actually caught air time. I, I do want to point out, we actually caught pretty decent, significant air time here. You, you can see there, I caught pretty decent air time. So, you know, the cr I said before, I loved- I said before how I love the crash physics of this game. And you can see there, we actually catch air time. So, I was, I was screwing around with getting my controller out and ready. To get a better view of this. But you can see there, we are in the air. And lads, I found my thumbnail for this episode. I can tell you right now, this image right here is the thumbnail. We actually catch a quite decent air time, so... But there goes our qualifying session. You know, there goes the qualifying session. We're out of qualifying. We'll be starting at the back of the grid. Barring any um, engine penalties for anyone. I know Ocon had an engine failure at the end of la in, the, in the last race. So he might need to take an engine penalty. Um, well, and in the end of all that, once again, Callum Eilat, our teammate, is through into Q2. This man is brilliant. I'm so glad I signed him for this season.
Uh, but he's through into Q2. Uh, will we start? We didn't set a time. We will be starting at the back of the grid for the race, which I've told you before, Spain is usually an absolute nightmare for me. I do not go well around Spain and my team in the past. Um, but anyway, we'll be starting last. Um, Spain, I don't know what the AI, it might be a bit of a two or three stop, a two, a two, two stop for a little st we start on the softs. Um, we'll be one stopping most likely in the race, which should hopefully help us out. But bear in mind, there is going to be rain coming to the end of the race, which again, that might help us out. We're making that one less stop on dries. Than, the, than some of the higher up AI. We could be able to jump a couple of people, but starting so far back, I very much doubt it. Um, but we'll just have to see what we can do, where Cal and my lot's gonna start. And if anyone's gonna have any grid penalties, because I suspect Ocon might, considering he had an engine failure um, at the, in the last race. So he might need to take grid penalties, I don't know. But let's, without further ado, go to the grid for race day and see what's gonna happen this week. The Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari, and we've had many more iconic moments since. The Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya then, a high-speed 2.89 mile circuit which demands an efficient downforce package and bravery on the part of the driver, especially through the blind right of Turn 9, which we might just see taken flat this weekend. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here today, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into Turn 1. It's all a bit like going into battle, and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Norris, Sergio Perez, and Ricardo, Leclerc, Sainz, Vettel and Pierre Gasly, Sonoda, Raikkonen, Callum Eilert and Mick Schumacher, Giovinazzi, Russell, Nikita Mazepin and Lance Stroll, Latifi, the owner driver, Fernando Alonso, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty and Esteban Ocon rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. So, grid penalties for both Alpine cars. We're promoted up to the 20th, Jeff. Let's aim to keep the momentum going. Cheers, Jeff. So, we're promoted up to the 20th. And as I said, we will be one-stopping in this race, by the way. Um, so, yes. Both Alpine cars with grid penalties. They're starting at the back. Um, and Lance Stroll also with a grid penalty. He clearly got into Q3 because he's on the soft. And everyone else outside the top 10 is starting on the mediums. And so, he clearly got into the top 10. And Callum Eilat qualified, I'm assuming he qualified either 15th or 16th, but got promoted up to 13th because of grid penalties. He definitely gained a place from Lance Stroll. So I'm guessing he qualified 13th, oh, he qualified 14th, 15th, or 16th, I'm assuming, and then got that, got promoted up to 13th, but we're going to five red lights for the Spanish Grand Prix in season one. They're out, we're underway with a, a decent, okay kind of start for us. Um, a much better start than Nicholas Latifi, and already Jeff is yabbering on about engine wear. In the second race, run down to turn one on the inside. We send one down the inside of Stroll here, trying to get past the Aston Martin, not quite managing it. Um, Nikita Mazepin is alongside as we pull past him. We got a world of understeer through turn three, not helpful at all for anyone. I have, I always get so much understeer through turn three. Wide in turn four, trying to get the power down. We get a little unsettled. We hit Nicholas Latifi. We go off into the gravel with wing damage. This was not the ideal strategy. This was not the ideal. We'll look back at that in a minute. But this was the start of the race from the offboard. Um, I didn't show this this time. 
Um, but the, all, both front runners got away well. The two Ferraris seem to get away decently. Um, North on the background on the inside of Perez, I believe that is. Bottas on the inside of Hamilton into turn one. Bottas takes the lead of the Spanish Grand Prix from second on the grid to two Red Bulls are scrapping away over third. Um, Lando Norris is in the background there as, um, that was Vettel and Sainz wheel to wheel there in the Ferrari and the Aston Martin. Perez trying to get past Verstappen. Verstappen trying to hold on to P3. I believe he qualified P3. I can't remember which order they asked to, I can't remember which order the Red Bulls qualified in. Um, but they two scrap away, Norris, Ricardo, Leclerc, Sainz, Vettel, Leclerc, Vettel, Sainz, rather, and the two Alpha Tauris I got there in the end. And uh, this is our incident of what happened here. We just kind of lost the back end, and we just hit Latifi, and what is this camera angle, Cody's? If I want to be on the onboard cam, I'll be on the onboard cam. And I want to point out Latifi, pretty lucky there. Ah, he got a puncture, I think. Did he? I don't know. I ca he may have got a puncture there. But I want to point he was very lucky to not get floor damage. I don't think he got floor damage. But he was very lucky to not get floor damage. Um, but we're going into the pit lane on this lap uh, to get our wing damage repaired and to go on to a set of hard compound tires. Let's go as long as we can in the race. Hopefully until the rain comes. We should be able to go until the rain comes if it does come. If not, I don't know. We can stick a set of softs on right at the end or something to go to the end. Um, but this is not an ideal way. I told you Spain wound up being Spain without the S for me. And um, Latifi also getting a wing change there in the background. He's also in. Um, so our race is kind of fucked to word it one way. There's no kind of, there's no eloquent way to word it. Uh, I was out forgetting to take the friggin' pit limiter off. Um, and we head back out onto the racetrack about 40 seconds back from P20. Not an ideal start to the race. But there's still 32 laps to do. So anything can happen. There could be a safety car later in the race if you've not seen the safety car yet. Um, but it's currently Valtteri Bottas, meanwhile, who's leading the way from Lewis Hamilton and the two Red Bulls. Followed by the two McLaren, uh, Vettel's and a Ferrari sandwich in P8 between Leclerc in 7th and Sainz in 9th. And then the two Alpha Tauris in 10 and 11. Followed by Callum Ilos, our teammate, who's running 12th. He's gained a position off the start um, from someone, I don't know who. Um, but then we have Raikkonen and Schumacher, Russell Stroll, who's gained play gained two places off the start. Um, as it's all a bit tame at the moment. A little bit tame at the moment. I say that just as we see Lance Stroll going for a move on Mick Schumacher down into turn one here. The Aston Martin on the soft compound, which will be in which at this current moment in time will be in a better condition, better race tire than the mediums, and then well, the Aston Martin is just a better car than the Haas. As well, of course, you have to bear in mind as well. Um, but of course, then we have Eilot under pressure from Kimi Raikkonen. And Raikkonen going for the move down the inside. Eilot trying to squeeze him out, but not quite working out. And Raikkonen going for the move down the inside. Uh, sticking it in there, though. Trying to keep it in there. This is the great scrap that's turning into. That's Lance Stroll hanging out in the background. He's gained a couple places, I believe, there. Um, because I believe this is a battle for 12th or something like that. 12th or 10th or something like that. I don't know. Um, you would have seen on the ladder, just there, before they took off the view of it, down into turn 5. Yes, that is turn 5. It's still holding on to the position ahead of the Alfa Romeo, which is a slower car, might I add. Um, we do have this quicker car than Alfa Romeo, and that is shown by Eilat. Keeping ahead, now it's about for 10th, sorry. Um, as we look on back, Riken and under pressure from Lance Stroll behind. Um, now, Stroll gaining... On the, uh, on the Alfa Romeo, but not quite going for something. And Raikkonen and getting a little bit messed up in turn 10. He's lost quite a bit of ground here. As uh, meanwhile, back on board of ourselves, we have Nicholas Latifi behind us. As ever, defending the inside line. You can see what I mean with the engine wear here. The, the ICE, this is the second race. It is 71% worn. The engine wear seems a little bit high on this game. Um, but I think Cody's might need to take a look at that. Because uh, two races... Not even two races, a race and eight laps. As we make a bit of contact with Latifi there through turn 11, I, I believe. And he, I believe there was a bit of damage that he got on his front wing. So he could be coming back into the pits. And you can see there on the minimap, that is the race leader, Max Verstappen. Not too far behind. That's how our race is going. Um, but I, as I've said, Spain tends to be Spain without the S. And Latifi is indeed back in the pit lane. Not intentional. Um, but we will soon be getting blue flagged, because that's just the way the race is going. And there you go, there's the blue flags. We need to let him by pretty soon. 
And that's what we're gonna do out of uh, turn eight here, try to let him by. We're gonna lose quite a bit of time as we let him by. He's quite slow in passing by, to be fair. Uh, so we did lose quite a considerable couple... I don't know, we lost quite a bit of time there. Um, but, so you know, that's just the way our, our race is going. And, um, well, currently Alpha Tower is yet, yet to pit, having a pretty decent race, to be fair, you know? And the two Mercedes who have pit are behind them. Um, Cal Milot is still to pit. Uh, Sergio Perez has been into the pit lane at this present moment in time. And, well, he's now passing by Perez. He is getting by and back up into P6. Well, back up into P6. He's up into P6. In this race at the moment, he's pitted onto the medium compound tires. He'll be on a two-stop, possibly three-stop if this rain does turn up at the end of the race and we need to go on to the intermediate tires later on or the wet weather tires or whatever. To be fair, the wet weather is actually not that bad in this game. It's a bit better than than the previous games. And George Russell is running at the top ten ahead of... Uh, behind Schumacher, Raikkonen, Eilat. And there is Daniel Ricciardo getting past Esteban Ocon into turn five. The McLaren has pitted. I don't think the Alpine has. I believe he started on those medium tires. Uh, Norris will want to get past the Alpine as well. Pretty damn quickly. Um, for the sake of his race, and I believe he will be going for it down into turn 10. If he isn't, then it's a mistake. We, uh, we have the worst camera angle in the world as Norris on the outside of turn 10, trying to get past the Alpine, uh, but can't quite get it in. Ocon keeping the car in there and doing a very good job of defending P13 in this race. And considering I'm on the off board so much, you can get there's nothing happening in my race. Um, as we continue on, on our way here, um, Hamilton, Bottas rather, gaining. On the Alf, on the Alpha Tauris, um, before he seems to have an issue. He's going slowly, pulling off, and that is his race over. From leading this race out of the first corner to DNF for Valtteri Bottas. Um, and Norris, still trying, so he's got past Ocon now. And freaking Ricardo trying to get past Giovinazzi, but the Italian is doing a very, very good job of defending P10. As there is a lot of cars all kind of in a row here. Stuck behind other cars who haven't pitted yet. Other cars that haven't stopped yet. Also in that queue. So many cars from Giovinazzi right down to Sainz. They're all in a queue. And it's actually Yuki Tsunoda leading the race right now. I just want to point out. Yuki Tsunoda in his rookie season. Leading the Grand Prix, leading the Grand Prix here in my team. Um, but he has Lewis Hamilton right on the tail. And I'm guessing Hamilton will be going for it very, very soon. And possibly even down this main straight. Because he'll have DRS. He's gaining on the Alpha Tower. He is he's in the quicker car, and I don't think Sonoda will fight this one all that much as Gasly's into the pit lane. And Hamilton does go for it into turn one. And this looks like it could be a very easy move. And that's a self there just up ahead. Uh, Gasly is indeed in the lead of this Grand Prix as people start to go into the pit lane. Um, who start on the medium compound tires, which promotes quite a few people up places. Vettel's gaining on Leclerc there. Um, to maybe look to go for a move. Will he go for a move? He's going for the move. We have more terrible camera angles. Science is the fast approaching the back of this. Vettel gets past Science. It's contact with his teammate. He goes into the barrier. And his front wing, I believe, is off on the Ferrari. And it's not just the front wing. It's the tire. There's Vettel going for the move. Science is out the race. He just brushes tires with his teammate. And that is Carlos Science's race over. He is out of this race with the brush of the tire and signs is out of the race. I don't think I ever saw this on F1 2020, so it's great to see. Um, but it was just a bit unfortunate. The front wing just kind of, just and the front wing and suspension just kind of went up there. Just kind of exploded a little bit there after the crash. But he is out, and the safety car is now out. The safety car out for the first time in this game. I've seen the safety car in this game here the first time. Well, this isn't the best situation, because we're a lap down on Verstappen, I believe. Or maybe we unlapped ourselves. Maybe we got to unlap ourselves, basically, when he pitted. I don't know exactly. Um, but regardless, that's Hamilton and I believe Sonoda back there, and then Verstappen behind them. As the Delta is being an absolute bitch as ever. I hate the safety car Delta. I absolutely hate it. Um, and the clock is ticking down, and I only know it's here. Oh shit, Delta. And we do get back into the green just in the nick of time. As uh, Well, there's Hamilton going into the pit lane here. Um, and Sonoda, I believe. As we make our way over to catch the safety car queue. Um, and hopefully, you, can, you can't you can unlap yourself though, which is the annoying thing on this game. I don't think you've ever been able to unlap yourself under the safety car. 
um, as our teammate's now into the pit lane. This should be a pretty good situation for him, as there is a safety car, and we're allowed to pass it. It's picked up the leader there behind. The lead car behind the safety car now is Max Verstappen, the race leader. So we've essentially, we're allowed to unlap ourselves here, which is something I've never been able to do before under the safety car in this game. You may remember Spain in Season 2 of my team on the last game, safety car came out, and I was a lap down, and I couldn't unlap myself, annoyingly. Um, but we have caught up to the back of the pack here. We are back in this race as the safety car is coming in. Um, uh, and we're in a very awkward place for this safety car restart and we get a very bad restart, um, unfortunately, because it, we're in a very awkward place, cold tires, worn cold hard tires for, for good measure. Um, as Nicholas Latifi is ahead of us there, but he's actually behind us. You can see our tires are not in a good shape. Um, but, well, okay, wear is not too bad, but they're just cold. Because we were going so slow in that third sector that I warmed them up, but then they just went cold again. Um, as Latifi pulling over to let us buy, he's not having a very good race. Um, unfortunately. He's now a lap down from literally everyone. Um, as we continue on our way to try and catch up to Mazepin here in P18. As there's yellow flags up ahead for some reason, there is, is I think that's an Alpine car going slowly, it's Alonso. The Spanish Grand Prix is Spain without the S with the Spanish drivers as now both Spanish drivers, Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso, are both out of the Spanish Grand Prix. Not a good afternoon for them and more bad luck for Alpine um, and they're on, the, on the durability side of things. Um, as people are into the pit lane, we gain a couple places. Norris and Stroll stopping for a second time in this race. We gain a couple of places if we try and close up to the Haas car up ahead. We gain another place from Vettel going into the pit lane. We can salvage something from this race. We can salvage something. As we are in DRS range of the Russian driver in the, well, American team car. Even though the car kind of looks a bit like a Russian flag, but that's besides the point. Um, we are closing and that pass car is slower. It's a slower car than us. However, we are also on much more worn tires than him. Um, so I don't know if we'll be close when we get tire on the gravel there as we go on. And we're on the gra on the curb and we're on the friggin' barrier and there goes our race, unfortunately. Uh, the curbs are lethal on this game, guys. The curbs are lethal. Uh, we just kind of got a bit- we just got a tire on- we just got on the curb there. We went a bit wide. Normally I can ride that curb fine, but that time the curb was like, nope. And it just kind of snapped over to the side. And I do want to point out, and you'll see here, it actually leaves grooves on the racetrack. It's not just black lines, it's grooves are left on the racetrack there from the crash. As we just get- the curb just snapped us over to the side. I can usually ride that curb, no problem. But this time, apparently not, and there we go. That rounds off what I suspected would be a bit of a nightmare of a race. Spain has always been a bad one for me, honestly. Every single time, Spain has been a nightmare. But, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. A real team effort which has paid off in spades. A great victory here at the Spanish Grand Prix. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralized. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. So Mercedes on the top spot once again. In the end, Callum Eilat finished in P11 um, to end up with. Just one place off a point. And actually, it looks like he was about only about eight tenths behind Raikkonen there at the end. So he could have finished in P10. Had he maybe had like maybe one more lap. In the end, we do actually finish in a higher position. Then we started P19, we started P20. Yeah, but that's because of three people DNF before we did. Um, and well, Hamilton wins. He still leads the championship. Um, to Max Verstappen, 21 points back. Bottas not having a good season so far. Um, as we are on to- oh Jesus Christ, it's Monaco next. Oh Jesus Christ. I will never not have that reaction to seeing Monaco be the next race on the calendar. But we have Monaco next very early in the season because of course we're still missing two tracks, which will hopefully be here soon, I hope, but it doesn't take Cody's three fucking months to get them in. 
Like it did with the performance patch on the last game that came in, what was it, October? It came in just before I bought the game, but we still gain acclaim ourselves from this. I a lot gains more acclaim, and we do gain quite a lot of team acclaim as well. I'm um, just at the top end of level 5, but for now, thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.